mean, we talk about the, you know, the, the show up kidnappings and we watch the news every other single day in Kenya and what we see uh, sound like some gory opera from some thriller movie with regards to what we see happening. You know, young kids getting kidnapped and sadly ending up killed in, you know, some outposts of bushes. We, we know very well of uh, the, the disappearances of people who just uh, get to disappear with no trace. And, uh, you know, the most recent of which, uh, the country was shaken and of course held in uh, some kind of in suspense and indecisive fear before, you know, Miss Carolyn Kangogo uh, sadly and reportedly shot herself or committed suicide uh, by taking her own life at her home in uh, Kirio. Now, all these things uh, happening and we are looking at this space you know you and me are looking at this space and thinking where is this madness gonna stop but this madness cannot stop by itself and there's got to be investment in a level of a heightened awareness on the part of the general populace and two and most critically that we start to understand our basic roles within this plan and in the grand scheme of things now Security is all about the freedom from the threats that we face in the society and all the risks that we face. While its compatriot safety is basically being protected from or then likely uh, to cause harm. Now, these go together. And as you can clearly start to imagine that we have very, very critical roles that we play in the grand scheme of things as regards safety and security. And so first of all, a level of awareness has got to be invested by the individual because both the consumer and the providers of security and safety are joined together in you know the partaking of the same and no responsibility is diminished when the other exists or the absence of the other does not uh, as a consequence you know in, invalidate the presence of the other ideally what we mean here is that you wake up walk talk perhaps uh, i mean mean sleep security and safety even if you are subconscious or unconscious about the same, then it means that your safety or this, your, your sound sleep and the freedom with which you go about your duties means that something is happening and is a making of some other actions elsewhere that assure the same. Now, that's why the president of this republic himself did actually optimistically say that security and safety does begin with you. Now, where, where does this go wrong? Where do we have these breakdowns? Scholars have analyzed situations in life, you know, in with a sharp light uh, focused on on the human beings that we are and the motives involved. And they did say that precipitous failures that we have in any part or a whole of a society do almost always spring up from you know, disastrous patterns of human behavior. And that's what I feel we have to focus our attention on. Look at how we interpret reality. Are we reeling on the good side of things and interpreting reality in the right way? Perhaps not. And if we give an example of uh, of COVID-19. I mean, the pandemic that did start, uh, first of all, half a world away in China, but of course, because someone made some small mistakes somewhere in Wuhan, the whole world is now grappling with the pandemic that has hit us below the belt. I mean, the ravages of Corona are such that lives have been lost and livelihoods have been lost. And of course, in, in, in a way that is obviously blind to whether you are delusional about it or you don't believe that it actually exists. If you still don't, then Wuhan to you. Uh, I mean, and, and the very cornerstones of our existence in regards to life and livelihoods have been shaken to a point where other things have also been stirred up. And part of that which, have been start, uh, which has been stirred up is basically the security and safety that we're talking about here. Now, you and I know that the statistics as they spell to us, we have increased levels of petty crime, increased levels of, say, kidnappings, and ransoms of any sort, and of course, organized crime, where we're thinking mega fraud that are being churned in some dingy areas or in some unknown places by individuals who are sitting down and are thinking, how do we make money out of you know, social engineering? So you get calls, nine out of 10, uh, from individuals that are you know, trying to make you believe that they're from you know, renowned service providers. And before you know it, your bank account has been swept and you left you know, um, wallowing in absolute uh, poverty staring in the face of imminent disaster now these are the things that you're talking about and the level of desperation uh, that we see with um, which some of these things are happening is are, are you know worrying if not absolutely uh, shocking i mean a video which i cannot particularly speak to as regards his veracity 
uh, has been floating around in the recent past of um, guys on a bike, you know, snatching a phone from the hand and the ears of a, of a police officer somewhere within, within Nairobi. Now, even when we don't can debate the veracity of that video till cows come back home, it sounds absolutely rational for individuals to probably meet disaster of that nature on a law enforcement individual. But then this irrational uh, happening can only make absolute sense to us if you look at the societal dynamics and what we've talked about in terms of the, the impact of COVID and other things and other actors that have basically shaken the cornerstones of security and safety and the way we are organized as of now and this, the societal dynamics side by side. And the dynamics are such that, one, we have a people on one end that have not appreciated deeply the benefits and of, of course the part that, that they play within the security and safety architecture and two, we have the people who are probably charged with the key and major responsibility of providing safety and security that potentially may not be doing uh, their jobs excellently and so there's a gap to be bridged. Now let's go into bridging that gap. The role in this plan as the partakers and of course the key stakeholders in security and safety have got to be shored up with uh, an empowered and increased awareness as to how then we interact with the current happenings, be it the challenges that we're facing today, in a manner that is not making us worse off, but to drive us to the table of partaking, or the arena of partaking on those challenges positively and coming out of it better. You and I, the good and well-intentioned individuals, are not going to be very leisure fair with the way we conduct our duties. I mean, we know it that when Corona was first announced and when we were just ushering ourselves into uh, the serious businesses of you know compromised movements as regards lockdowns and all the rest of it we as the citizenry who are in you know uh, running battles with the police a lot of us were found in locked locked in bars or hiding away in some bushes and having fun yet on the other end we are talking about the huge impact of, of that we were sharing in in terms of the economic impact of of the lockdowns, that business was not being conducted and of course we could not go out there freely to make money. But this is the same money that was being wasted as you could see in bars and in, all of, in, in places out there. Of course we can talk about mental health issues until cows come back home in that regard as well. But it only means as well that we did not um, keep our hay, you know, and preserve our hay as they say when it was still shiny. So of course we ended up with raw eggs on our faces. Uh, as they probably say. So that is one way of looking at it. Now, the correct attitude that we ought to have formed and the, with, of course, a light shone on the correct um, picture of the reality is that we could have been guarded more and, of course, followed with the, enough discipline and attention to the health protocols that were advised by experts and definitely not charlatans sat in some corner house and trying to just make life difficult for ourselves. Now, in a sense, that of course loaded a lot more weight on the shoulders or even the security you know architecture with regards to you know you're talking about the police and every other person that are involved in the enforcement of COVID protocols i mean you could not have thousands and thousands of policemen just out there to tell people to do the common sense or stuff or staying at home and if you all did by the way you'd think within 14 days which is the incubation period of, of COVID, for that matter would have ended in a short while now on the same light, if you're looking at the practice of provision of security and safety by the other elements, then there's a lot to be admired or de desired for that matter. I mean, the way the, the well-intentioned strategies for the preservation of human safety and, and security matters against the backdrop of the pandemic did not meet the threshold of best performance on, on the part of the uh, security operators. Uh, to an extent, we witnessed loss of lives. More lives were actually lost, more than what COVID had claimed at the beginning of, of the enforcement of the, the protocols for that matter. And that, in a sense, also did not inspire hope and confidence and perhaps buy-in from the general populace. Now, that can only breed one thing, which is chaos. But this is the kind, kind of things that we need to actually address ourselves to so that we bridge the gap and, of, of course, close it in to have all of us partake of the relevant uh, procedures and protocols and of course general wellness for the entire populace because as I said security and safety is for, for us all. Now the most important thing that we are going to address ourselves to here are just the basics of the dynamics of understanding our key roles 
in the whole game plan of safety and security. And for that matter, I'm thinking there's a huge gap that's left with regards to how we treat ourselves to the vulnerabilities that we create, sometimes inadvertently with the way we are. Now, we sure know that there's the ravaged lives and livelihoods of a whole sum total of a greater part of the populace. And the best bit that you could do as an individual going forward is to one, show up our situation and awareness with regards to just knowing what happens and what goes on. Because if we look at how even against um, what we saw the other day, uh, Ms. Carolyn Kangogo, then it ideally means that the major part of the consumer the stakeholders here were potentially letting ourselves down. And as you only know, as you only are strong as the weakest link, I think the citizenry is letting uh, the, the whole system down uh, to a greater extent. For sure, Ms. Kangogo traversed several counties to end up in Kerio, that's her home county. And we sure know even during the, her movements from one country to another, Nairobi, Kiambu, then she traversed and she potentially moved on, uh, by road uh, or, or by whatever means. And, and ideally that means that she interacted with quite a number of individuals, if not just the security agencies but us as the civilians or the citizenry for that matter. Now our role in the whole game plan in terms of what we do to infuse ourselves within the security and safety architecture with passing the vital information to whoever would act on them is actually lacking. If you looked at that alone, if you looked at other situations that we were to grapple with, it, it means this total breakdown of that, those vital communication channels that are meant to pass critical information. And Mark you, security and safety situations are high liability and they may spell disaster, potentially death or loss of livelihoods on another end. These are critical issues in society. Now, how do we play within that plan? It's the duality. And the duality here is there's got to be willingness on the part of those that are charged with the critical, the back is stopping with, in charge with the critical duty of ensuring public safety and security. And then there's got to be the willingness on the part of the populace to show their awareness up and play within that role by passing critical information that is of course realistic and maybe helpful on the other end. Now, we can talk about the public security architecture failure in terms of the capacity and failure in terms of probably the motives and professionalism on that matter to make sure that all these things are done and delivered with absolute exacting you know, um, motives at the end of the day. And I think that is where also there's problems because we are not empowered perhaps to share in some of the well-intentioned uh, you know, strategies because we do not have the willingness, one, and two, we do not have the correct motives with regards to how they are spelled out to us. We sure know that strategies have three major parts to it. There's the who, what, and how. The who, what are able to, you know, get into the situation and make it happen, but the how it's done can obviously spell, you know, negative results at the end of the day. And it is my uh, humble, you know, of course, request and advice for us all who are, you know, within this architecture of security and safety to play our vital roles. And one uh, is to be absolutely patriotic. And patriotism here does not mean that you are following headlong and with blind obedience to whatever happens. It means that when you're living within that house, you are able to speak out even when you do not like some things and you say, hey, we exist in this house and we have to exist in this house even when we disagree to agree to get to the next level. That has got to happen because we love to get to the next level better and not worse. That is what security and safety means to us and that is what security and safety should mean to you and that is what we should be very, very passionate about. And to look at ourselves as key stakeholders within the game plan of safety and security. It should be that basic, it's difficult, but it means that we have to upset a few things in fundamental ways and one way to look at it is to wrap our minds around the reality of what safety and security means to us and the fact that we are key stakeholders in the whole game plan. So folks, you realize security and safety is actually who we are. So do join me in my next episode as we discuss and of course take a deep dive on matter security and safety, which we cannot exploit in a setting, as you realize. And you know what? The critical part that you play in this game plan is that you join me in this walk by obviously sharing this, commenting and give the vital feedback that's basically resident in you. And when we come together, as we said, great things do happen. And here's to you. Thank you.